This is a tribute to Benedict Elide Odiase, passed on. The story of the Nigerian police and indeed music in the military or armed forces cannot be complete without the mention of the name Benedict Elide Odiase. An officer and a gentleman and one of the pioneers of music in the military in Nigeria. Benedict Odiase was the first indigenous band master of the Nigerian police band. He is also reputed to have written the music score of the current national anthem. Apart from the national anthem, he played, he composed a, a police march, which we normally play sometimes. He composed a Kwewane Geri. There are many that I can't easily remember. Sobe is a small town in Edo State. It is in the northern part of the state, in the local government area called Onwan West. But on August 25, 1934, this little town of Sobe was in Ondo State. And it is here, on this day, Benedict Elide was born. He had his early education in Sobe and Wari before enlisting in the Nigerian police force in March 1954. Unlike some of his peers, Benedict ironically joined the force solely to be a musician, not to carry guns. He was a child who was from a family of traditional musicians who inspired him early in life to love and cherish music. His journey to the police force was not an easy ride. Having lost his father on November 5, 1948, young Ben had to be raised by members of his extended family. Ben Odiasi was my f first cousin. Um, ben Odiasi's mother was my father's immediate elder sister. I heard my father brought him to Lagos in uh, possibly the early 50s. We were kids then in our house in Okekoko Street in Lagos Island where we were born. And I believe he entered the police force thereabout, maybe 1954, 55. I was a kid at, uh, from my father's house. Um, as a young, as a child growing up, I was very, very proud of him. Each time he came to our house on the island with his police uniform, well done. And I, at that time, I was five, six, I was, uh, I, had a, I, had a, I had a fear of policemen. I used to run. If I see a policeman on the road, I would run away and that sort. I don't know why, but this man changed me because each time he came to our house, here was I not wanting to see a policeman running after him, carrying his heart and putting it on myself, and uh, that's that. The fortunes of Ben began to turn around when he obtained the General Certificate of Education Ordinary Level in 1960 as an external student of Wolsey Hall Correspondence College, London. In 1962, Odiase was nominated to read music at the Royal Military School of Music, Nella Hall, Twickenham, Middlesex, London. In 1964, he obtained the Associate of the Royal College of Music, ARCM, London. In 1965, he obtained the Nella Hall Certificate. On arrival into the country in May 1966, he was posted to Enugu, where he established the Area Command Band for the police force before he was moved to Benin to reorganize the band in the then Midwest. In September 1968, Benedict Elide Odiasi 
was appointed the first Nigerian director of music for the Nigerian Police Force Band. He took over from James Ball, an expatriate. The expatriate were teaching us their own way of music. But when he came in, he now impacts our local uh, music. Like the one we just played, uh, the, the Akwewane Geri, is pure Africans. Is he, did he write the song or just composed he, he wrote, the music? He wrote it. He, 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 com wrote, he, composed, the, he wrote and composed the music. The music. Yes. Okay. Odiasi went on to midwife the birth of the police band in many parts of the country. These include the police band in Ibadan, Jos, Meiduguri, Kalaba, Ilon, Sokoto, Makurdi, Akure, Yola, Abelkuta, and Katsina. Ben Odias, DCP retired, did a lot for the police band. He taught us, those I met in the force, he taught them. I can remember like the first person who he recruited from the Nigerian police, uh, Nigerian School of Music, that is Colonel uh, Olubabokun of the Nigerian Army. He was the first to be trained by him in the School of Music. And it was and, uh, Olubabokun who started the, the, the Nigerian it, Army Band. The Nigerian Army Band. Then apart from that, he trained our sisters uh, band, like the Navy band, like the uh, custom band, like the Air Force band. He was excellent. He couldn't have gotten a better, you know, trained officer in that field, in this country, you know, during the time that, you know, he was around. And as you said, again, um, he also came out with this entertainment, you know, section of the police band. And so, um, uh, during, you know, mass activities in the good old days, you know, it, it, it wasn't those uh, usual uh, music that people uh, associate with uh, 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 forces people, you know, there was real entertainment music. In 1979, Benedict Odiase became a fellow of the Victoria College of Music. He has won several medals of honor, the National Service Medal, Republican Medal, General Service Medal, and the Nigerian Police Medal. This was crowned in 2001 when the then President Olushe Obasanjo honored this distinguished music director with the award of Member of the Order of the Niger, M-O-N. As far as I'm concerned, it's worth much more than that, uh, what they call it, that low... And national honors they, 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 they gave to him. They gave to him. If I, you know, were asked, what do you think? I, I would have said that give him a CFR. You know, commander of the Federal Republic. I think what he did, he deserved that. I don't know. Probably they were looking at the rank. The rank, you know, uh, 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 he, he, he wore by the time he was retiring from the, uh, from the poli police uh, uh, service. Um, but I think, you know, uh, when it comes to giving national honor, it should be much more than what your rank is or what your status in the country is. I, I think it should be, what have you done, you know, for the country? What will people remember you for? I do not think Nigeria was fair to let Ben Odiasi. Yes, he was the first Nigerian military bandmaster. He was the first Nigerian director of music of the Nigerian place. And uh, I remember during the war, 
1967, I believe, when the war broke out. He was caught out in the then Midwestern state. He eventually came back to Lagos and uh, found his way back onto his job as the director of music. He was at the middle rank of the Nigerian place for a long time before he was eventually promoted, I believe, to the CSP, Chief Superintendent of Police rank. Um, he eventually got to the position of the Assistant Commissioner of Police, and I believe for several years he was in charge of the musical department of the Nigerian place, which he did not only handle very well, I believe he was involved in the training of so many other military people. Some of his trainees were from the Navy, <coughs> excuse me, and the Army at that time. He did a lot. In that regard alone, I believe he deserved more than he got from the nation. When the late General Murtala Mohammed came to power, patriotic favor was strong among Nigerians. His death in a bloody military coup in 1976 did not in any way douse this enthusiasm. The Obasanjo Yadua administration continued it in the same stead. They picked a national anthem which they claimed lacked any Nigerian touch. Advertisements were then placed in national newspapers requesting for entries for musical composition for a new Nigerian anthem whose wordings were already in place but needed the music. Odiase did not get to hear or see these adverts and so no entry was sent from either himself or the Nigerian police band. This alarmed the Federal Ministry of Information who wrote Odiase asking why he or his men did not send any entry. Odiase rose to the challenge and sent an own entry from a list of entries which included that of great Nigerian composers like Professor Akin Yuba and Professor Lars Ekweme. Nigeria's then Supreme Military Council picked Benedict Odiase's entry. Benedict got married to Theresa Apenosumi, Ni Dokpesi, and they are blessed with beautiful children and grandchildren. We first of all got in contact with Mr. Odiase in the year 1967 when he proposed to my elder sister. From there, we went to Agenebode, did the wow traditional rites, came to Benin. From Benin, he was posted to Lagos as the director of music. And in 1968, he got married to my sister, precisely March 1st, 1968 very young man, intelligent, 
police officer who had trained in England. And I will remember first director of music, Nigerian director of music. Apart from God Almighty, uh, my father was somebody I really looked up to. He was more or less a father to everybody, respective of uh, where you come from. To me, it was more or less like my hero. He taught me a lot. And um, I never expected that he would go so soon. I recall times when he was working um, in the police. The house was not too far from the office. And I'll always stroll from the house to the office, sit with him while he's doing his work. And he was always used to working late hours, you know, late into the night, you know, seven, eight. And there are times I'll just go there and just um, begin to make fun, just to try and make him relax a bit, especially when I know he's tensed and all that. And uh, on one of such occasions, I think I went to him, I probably was about 12 then, and uh, he was having a very serious meeting. And I just passed into the office and I said, I want suya. And my father said, Benedict, I'm having a meeting. I said, Daddy, I want suya. And you know, I just burst out crying. So he just got up, carried me, went out, bought me suya and brought me back, and then put me on his lap while the meeting was going on. He was someone that believed in your personal expression. He wasn't, he wasn't um, very, very um, dogmatic um, concerning what choice of career you choose. You must not be a lawyer, you must not be a scientist, you must not be a, um, uh, an engineer. He wasn't that kind of person. More or less, he took out time to study some of our giftings from a very early age. I, I remember stumbling on his diary. He had this diary. And I was younger then. I was like, ah. I, I came across everybody's names. And uh, he had possible career interests attached to it. And by my name, I saw graphic artist. I was like, Daddy, graphic artist, what does that mean? And he was like, you love to draw a lot. He always said, buy me pencil, buy me color books. I said, that's why I believe you eventually that you, may, you might eventually do that. And by the time I finished school, at first in secondary school I went to a pure science class and he was like, are you sure about this? And I just said, I think, I just want to see how science is like. Eventually, I, I now went on to discovering myself, what he already knew before then, because he just let me be. And I eventually found out that I was better with my hands I wasn't, I, I didn't enjoy the sciences that much. And he just said he knew, but he just wanted me to find out on my own. He wasn't, he wasn't a very difficult person at all. He wasn't. I was very close to him. It was everything to me. We we're so close. We shared everything together. We eat together. We joke together. We play together. They we were very, very close. And he took me, took care of me when I was very young. And I really missed him so much. Uh, I mean, uh, Benny. No, she okay. was asking where is Benny. Okay, okay. she will so give her the phone. Oh, okay. He was a family man, not only to his immediate family, but the extended family. In his lifetime, the Dopesi family never stopped trooping into his house, and he always welcomed everybody who came to his house. To the extent that my late dad, before he died, was always singing praises of late Mr. Ben Odiaze as his best in-law. He was a wonderful person, I will say. I saw him after the death of my father as the father of the Dopesi family because of his kind gesture to all of us, not just us alone, but he was just a nice person to whoever came to him for any assistance. I will never forget was when my father came.
from again over there in the year 1972-73 and right in the police college he told my father your son my son is proceeding overseas he wants to be a medical doctor and I'm telling you he will come back successfully it was his wish and it was accomplished that I will never forget I call him grandpa because the children around me and everybody we call him grandpa and uh, I happen to be very fortunate to be very close to my father-in-law in short my father-in-law was as good as my father. In his last five years, I was really, really, very close to him. And um, one thing that I find with him is, is quite amazing when it comes to the personality reshaping influence that he has as a person. You know, as a, compos as a composer of the national anthem, I've had occasion to say, oh, but daddy, you seem to be very contented with, with your estate in life as a person. And um, how do you really feel that you, you have uh, contributed immensely to the something that is central to the, the, to the national evolution of a country and uh, you don't seem to feel people seem to uh, have the opinion rather that you, you haven't really been well recognized where you ought to look i must tell you that the answer that pa ben Udiasi has given me has personally shaped how i see national service and development he would often say look pious it's a privilege that the nation has given me to have saved his friends continue to have fond memories of him. He's a man of discipline. He does not condone, we call it uh, negligent. He just keeps to time. He's a tangible man. Very courageous man. Though, in family area of it, I think it's 100% alright, but when you know when you become an adult, a lot of things happen along. But the man is a disciplined man. He does not take years for no. That's the man I know for. I want to tell you, say 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock. For your own good, if you say 6 o'clock, you would have been there 3.30 to 4 o'clock before. All the years I drove, I've never got one fault from him because I know who he is. I read him so closely. So I did not fall into his hand one day. Until when he was going, we said, Jolly, all the years you were with me, I've not found fault for you. Keep it up, it's well with you. So he said, My love, he's a disciplined person. Well, um... Around 1976, 77, uh, I met him uh, and uh, we've been together as friends with one other man, Mr. Adeniyi. I actually met him through Mr. Adeniyi, uh, who is an educationist who lives in the Jew now. And um, we became friends. And um, when uh, the friendship grew uh, further, and I think there are only three of these pictures. Um, that was uh, himself in the middle, Mr. Adini. Uh, and Mr. Dini here and myself here. And uh, was this that was on the 23rd of August 2003. Uh, uh, Mr. Odias's uh, cousin, who was a chief in uh, one of the suburbs in Lagos State, uh, I've forgotten his name now, uh, uh, was having some ceremony. I think the daughter was wedding. Then he invited us and then we all went there. And uh, that was when this picture was taken. But we, it's a matter of just coming, just go out. Uh, whenever you had time, you will come to us. And whenever we also had uh, time to visit him, we will visit him. And uh, unfortunately, I think that was 1991 while conducting um, uh, the 
band, the orchestra in Abuja, he slumped and uh, he was brought down to Lagos. But he said, take me to my friend at Obanikoro. I used to run a clinic at that time, up to about five, six years ago, uh, which we call Ajua Clinic. It's on that paper. And um, that is what I will always try as much as possible to remember about him. He was in the federal capital with all the paraphernalia of the health services in Abuja at that time. And uh, he decided to come to Lagos. He was held um, on, the two on, the two, on the shoulders of two uh, uh, policemen to enter my place. So it's a small place. Uh, I live upstairs, and we have a clinic downstairs. Then he came in. We admitted him. We started treating for whatever we thought we could do. But one thing that, it, uh, that kept on vibrating in my mind, reverberating in my mind, was the fact that um, my clinic now, small as it is, in a corner in Obanikuru, off Ikorodu Road, was bombarded by the people in uniform, the police with the flags, with the sirens, and all that. And then um, it happened that uh, people in the area were wondering, this man used to, I mean, he's, he, we respect him in this area. He doesn't cause trouble. Why now the whole place is full of uh, police and all that? <laughs> I later knew about that about, after about three weeks when Mr. Diaz left. The police eulogize the man they call a hero. Promise to keep the flag flying. I will never frustrate your legacy. Pabe, rest in peace. For members of the Nigerian Police Force Band, Benedict Odiase was not just the first indigenous director. He was not just the one who composed the national anthem or composed beautiful songs or composed game anthems. He was an icon. And that is why even till time immemorial, they choose to always celebrate him. 63 Oregon Road, Lagos, was the residential building of this great hero. As friends, family and well-wishers come in to pay their last respects, it is obvious this house shall no longer fill or be the same. Actually, my sister, yes. that's, 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 that's the way it should be. Benedict Elide Odiase is a man who not only put patriotism in our lips, but also put it in our hearts. He is indeed a Nigerian hero.